Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines we have here at the Basilica to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of mass, we ask you to follow the usher's directions for leaving the church. Our gathering chant today is number 486 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Apostles of Our Ancient Faith. Our presider is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feasts of Saints Philip and James, apostles. And today Father Ray Earl of our diocese is celebrating his 36th anniversary of priestly ordination. <clears throat> so I invite you to remember him and his intentions in your Mass in a special way today. That we may worthily bring all of our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, we pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King O God almighty Father Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in 
the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladness each year with the feast day of the Apostles Philip and James, grant us through their prayers to share in the passion and resurrection of your only begotten Son, so that we may merit to behold you for eternity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold fast firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then Christ appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, Christ appeared to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 19, their voice goes out through all the earth. Oh 
From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Our uh, responsorial psalm today is a beautiful praise of what the apostles have done, that their message has gone out through all the earth. And in the first reading, Paul, speaking to the uh, Corinthians, speaks about how they've received that message, how they've, they've seen the resurrected Lord, and he's given them that message to pass on. And in the gospel, Jesus, speaking to the apostles, says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that the Father is in him, and if they have seen him, they have seen the Father. And he invites them to share what they have received, and he assures them that they will do even greater works than his, the works that he has done if they remain in him, if they are open to him in faith, and if they call on his name asking for these things for which, uh, with these works that they are to do. We see Philip in today's gospel passage saying, well, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And I think often in life, uh, there is a tendency to want assurances. Uh, No matter how many of them we get, we're looking for one more. That seems to be the way it is with Philip in in our gospel passage today. That's a sign of his humanity. Uh, The Lord does work through him powerfully in the future, but he's still, he's still, he's still struggling to, to be assured that God is with him, to be assured that, that what he believes in is going to actually be true. And I think that's something that maybe we can all in some ways identify with, that we all have those moments of doubt or those moments when we're looking for a further assurance. It reminds me of that passage in the Gospels where the man comes to Jesus and asks the Lord if he can to heal his son. And Jesus says, if, if you believed anything could be done for you. And the man says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So we continue in our Mass. We celebrate the faith of the apostles. 
And we ask the Lord to strengthen our faith and to help us day by day to, to be open to him and to do the works that he wants us to do, calling on his name, trusting in him, and trusting that he will allow us to do wonderful things if only we are in union with him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus assures us, that we're, assures us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here with us, let us offer to him now our prayers and petition. We pray for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders, that they may always be open to God's guidance and his wisdom and, and strength in their ministry. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves and for all who have received the gift of faith that we may nourish that gift and seek day by day to share that faith with the people we meet. For this we pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick and the suffering, for all those for whom today is a time of trial or difficulty or oppression, that in the midst of their trials they may feel God's presence and feel his care through the assistance given them by his followers. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings we bring on the feast day of the Apostles Philip and James, and bestow on us religion pure and undefiled through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, <laughs> always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Oh 
of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Philip, St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we are God's children and so with confidence we can pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter distance in the communion line. As you approach the line, sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. After responding Amen and after receiving Holy Communion, please step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing.
the communion hymn is number 6.4 in the Celebrate in Song. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the be one in the Lord. I am the bread of life, broken for all. Eat now and hunger no more. Let us be bread, blessed by If you keep my commands, no longer servants, but friends. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Purify our minds, we pray, O Lord, by these holy gifts we have received, so that, contemplating you in your Son, together with the Apostles Philip and James, we may be worthy to possess eternal life through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary, for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. 
we entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. We have a special threefold blessing for this Feast of the Apostles. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Apostles Philip and James. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the Apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 383 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Alleluia, Give Thanks to the Risen Lord. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia. Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, Alleluia, give to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to